TSA conducted pat downs on family members of plane crash victims. Yeah, you can see the plane right there. And the LA Times reports to get into the boarding area to meet with them, those are the, uh, the victims of the crash. Loved ones were interviewed, searched, and vetted by TSA officials. Officials. The vetting included checking the family names, uh, checking that the family names matched up, and also that the passengers knew the people who were trying to get through the security area. And I just want to just, I was talking to one of our guys uh, a minute ago about how they were trying to match up the names of people. So let's say if you didn't have a name, you were there to pick up your friend or your mother or whoever was on that, uh, that horrible crash, and you're trying to get through, are they, you know, can I pick them up? Are they even alive? And the TSA agent says, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Bob Smith. Uh, who are you here to pick up? Mary Jones. Well, you can't go through. Your, your name, I'm sure this happened to somebody. Your name doesn't match the name of the person you're trying to pick up. He's like, well, I know it's, it's, that's my, it's my girlfriend. We're not married. We don't have the same name. But I'm pretty sure there was, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a situation where the person didn't get through for just that reason. Just the, the whole security theater. I mean, the, the TSA didn't keep that plane from crashing. I'm not saying that they had anything to do with that. But, you know, the security theater is not going to keep accidents from happening. Now, why the plane crashed? They said it may have been some pilot error, possibly some air traffic control error. We still don't exactly know what brought the, the plane down in such a fashion. But, you know, we're just still trying to figure that out. And... Alex Jones talked about this on the day show, and I was like, come on, that, that's not true. Because, you know, even working here at InfoWars, sometimes I hear Alex say something, and I'm like, that cannot possibly be true. But then I went and saw it for myself. There's an article from Forbes, and don't worry about pulling this up, Marcos, unless, you, unless you're just Johnny on the spot. But there's an article from Forbes where they said, they said that uh, people on that plane, that you see that horrible crash right there, they were so concerned with their goods, with, uh, with their personal effects, that they grab their articles first and then their family members and their children second. Not to mention the people in the back of the plane. So let's say you're at the front of the plane and you know you got people, the plane's on fire, it's burning to a crisp. You got people in the back of the plane who need to get up, but you're like, oh no, hold on, hold on, hey, hey man, chill out. Let me get up here and get my iPod out of here. Let me get my iPad. Let me get this Gucci purse or you know whatever else that they may, may have been carrying. Not to mention the people in the back of the plane are about to die of smoke inhalation or whatever else, but also the fact that people grab their bags first and their children second. I believe that one was in the New York Times. So, I mean, it's just, just, it shows you that even in a horrible situation like that, the materialism of people in this world, that their valuables is more, they're, they're, it's more valuable than human life. You got your children, you have other people in the back of the plane, and it's, it's a very sad situation to see such materialism take over in a horrible situation. Oh, there you go right there. San Francisco 777 crash. Why did so many passengers evacuate with bags? Yeah, you know, you got, you know, like I said, people in the back. Now, hold on. It says he grabbed his bags and then his child in that order. There it is right there. It's the next, it's at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, he grabbed his bags and then the child in that order. And he's like, yeah, what's wrong with that? You know, we needed our... Uh, we needed our Xbox and we needed our uh, Wii or we needed our whatever. You know, no, I didn't so much need the child. I just needed the, the goods and stuff. So uh, a very sad situation. Uh, not just sad that the plane came down, but also that people behaved in such a way after it hit the ground. Now we'll move on to some surveillance news here. And this was also protested at the, uh, the rally on the July 4th. AT&T joined Verizon Facebook in selling customer data. I'm sure nobody is surprised about this. You can see it right there on your screen. AT&T has announced that it will begin selling customer smartphone data to the highest bidder. Well, at least they admit it. Putting the telecommunications giant in line with Verizon, Facebook, and other competitors that quietly use customers' history to, for marketing purposes. Now, I've been telling people this for years. They didn't want to believe me, but recently we've had the prison you know, scare or, or leak or whatever you want to call it. We have this article and other things like this where people finally admit that, yeah, Facebook sells your data. So keep this in mind, and, and you can see it if you go, if you go on Facebook right now and you, and you say, uh, hey, you put it on your wall, hey, uh, I went and saw the Lone Ranger this weekend or whatever, and you hit enter, and then the next screen it pops up, it refreshes, and now you have Lone Ranger uh, ads in real time. After you just posted your post, now you have all these ads, and I'm like, well, how did that get there? And I saw this great ad for Facebook, well, not, not official ad, but, you know, people do those, like those motivational posters, and it would say something, and it says something underneath it, and it said, Facebook, if you're not, it said, Facebook, if you're not the client, you're the product, 
which is very true. In some cases, you may be both the client and the product. So keep in mind, when you give out your information freely to these people, and you say, oh, they're so nice for allowing me to use their services for free to keep up my friends and all that stuff. And I have a Facebook account. I use it very sparingly. I just use it to keep in loose contact with people. But don't put your personal information on there. Don't put your horrific pictures on there. And I just can't believe people just can't get the notion that, you know, a lot of companies now check your Facebook pages when they want to offer you a job, especially if it's a real like career type job. It may, they may not care if you work at McDonald's or whatever, but if you have a, a real you know, Fortune 500 job or whatever type of real job, they're going to go check your Facebook page and you got, uh, you're taking jello shots out of somebody's belly button or whatever else. That comes back on you. So just, just don't do that and, and don't allow them to sell your information. And more on this, if they're going to sell your information, why do you have to pay them a fee to use their services? You're paying them to spy on you. If you're one of those people you say, I don't care if they spy on me, I don't have anything to hide, you may not. But why do you have to pay? You know, if they're going to sell your information anyway, shouldn't you get a free phone? Shouldn't you get an Obama phone or an AT&T phone or NSA phone? That's a new thing. Get your, get your NSA phone and say, well, since you're going to be selling all my data anyway, why should I have to pay for it? Verizon, AT&T, Facebook, and I'm sure, I mean, these are just the people that we know about, the people that uh, have come out the closet about it, the people who have been exposed for it. So I'm sure more that will come out uh, very, very shortly. And keeping in line with this NSA stuff, NSA ties put German intelligence in tight spot. Now this is uh, some testimony from Mr. Uh, Mr. Snowden. Snowden isn't buying the innocence of leading German politicians and government figures who say that they were entirely unaware of the spying programs. On the contrary, the NSA people are in bed together with the Germans, said uh, Snowden in an interview conducted with the help of encrypted emails. So Snowden is saying, you know, what they're telling you that they didn't know, and oops, and we're sorry, and we didn't know, even though we've shown you here at InfoWars, the NSA Center in San Antonio, and there are many others around the country, but, you know, they're saying that they didn't know, and these things don't exist, and we didn't build this NSA Center across the street from a Walmart on a busy street. It, none of this stuff actually happened, and I just can't, it's hard for me to believe. Like, you know, I had to go down there to the NSA Center, witness it with my own eyes, come back file a report about it, and people were still in denial that it was there. And even the guard I was talking to, he was like, how'd you know this was an NSA center? I was like, bro, it's on Google, Google Maps. It's on Google Earth. I mean, you built this thing across, literally across the street from a Walmart. You're driving these unmarked cars, and I he turned around, and I saw a little insignia that said, like, NSA or something. And I, it's, just, it's so cartoonish, you know, like they have the cloak of invisibility, like it's the, like the, Legion of Doom's headquarters, like you can't see it or something. I don't know what these people are doing. It's like you, these are not the droids you're looking for. They just think you're so stupid. I, I, I don't even know what else to say about it. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones, 
with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces. Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com. Forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones. Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.